In the previous video, we added in all of the properties for the car physics, and here they are down here in the start. So each car that gets created right at the start gets a random set of values for these between two values that I kind of figured out myself through some trial and error. Now, as I said before, you could just set these values to like, I don't know, zero and 100 or whatever the particular range is to make sure that you do cover this sort of thing and let it go. It will need to train for a very, very long time before it gets anywhere close to sort of finding these values. So by doing this, we can actually see the system get smarter a lot quicker because it's starting with values that I've given it. Okay, and we've got uh, the 50 cars that get it and then any cars after that actually get bred to be there and they swap these values. So these genes here belong to parents. When the parents have finished going around the track, we determine which one's the fittest, so which one actually got through the most waypoints. And from that list, we get the top half, or you can take the top quarter or whatever you want, and breed with those and interchange all of these values that are down here. So now it's time to program in the breeding and the swapping of the gene sequences. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a method to swap these genes. Okay, so we'll call it game object. Now we're gonna return a game object from this because this is going to be the child or the offspring from the parents. So we'll call it gene swap and we'll pass through AI controller parent one and AI controller parent two. Okay, so down in here, we're going to then instantiate a child. So game object C equals instantiate and this is the same code that we've used before, so we want to instantiate a car prefab, and it will be at this.transform.position and this.transform.rotation of the manager. And then we set the AI for this particular new car. So AI controller AI equals C dot get component AI controller okay and then we have to do pretty much all of these things up here so I'm just going to copy all of these we also are going to add this car into the list but not here further down so we copy that and we paste it down into here now instead of doing this random stuff we're going to swap the parents. How you do this is totally up to you, okay? So you could experiment with this. Like this value here could be from parent one. So we could go parent one dot steering sensitivity. And then the next one could be parent two dot look ahead. And then this one could be parent one dot max talk. Uh, or you could do the first half of these values for parent one and the second half for parent two. What I'm going to do, because we have these uh, numbers that we're working with, is I'm actually going to use the average of both of the parents' values. So I'll put plus parent two dot steering sensitivity, and then divided that by 2.0 F, like that. And that will then sort of come to a point where it's a compromise between both of the parents. So again, it's totally up to you how you combine these values. Okay, so I'm gonna go through this now and just apply all of these quickly for the averaging and you can do that too. And then once we've set all these values, we're just going to return our child car that we've just created. Okay, so the next thing we need to do after our gene swap is the breeding process. So in here, we'll put a void breed, and then inside of here, we're going to, first of all, set the start time. So this is the start time that's gonna keep track of the length of each generation that we create. So once we come into breed, we'll set this up to be time dot real time since startup. And then 
we will create a list of game objects and that list will be of sorted cars and that's going to equal a link statement so what you need for a link statement is the link library so come up to the top and make sure that you've added in this using system.link here and it just makes it so easy to sort values so it's going to equal cars dot order by descending which means that the fittest cars will be at the top of the list and we're going to sort on the objects get component AI controller dot fitness dot to list okay so we now have that sorted cars list right so the next thing we need is actually to cut this list in half because this list is going to contain all of the cars that we basically started with the first time round we only want like the top fittest car so I'm going to go with the top half cars and depending on which set of cars you go for whether it's like the top quarter you're just going to have to make sure that whatever you do to breed them as you'll see in a minute will leave you with the same number of children that you initially had so that that list has the same number in it every time okay so int half cars equals an int from sorted cars dot count divided by 2.0 f and we will put brackets around here to make sure that that becomes an integer and then we will go cars dot clear so this is the cars array that's holding on to all the cars so this was the original 50 cars we had so we're going to empty it out ready to put the children in as we create them so we'll have a four int i equals zero i is less than half cars and then i plus plus now this strategy that i'm going to use inside of here is to breed the first car on the list with the second car in the list and then to breed them around the other way and then move on to the second car and breed that with the third car and then move that on to the third car and breed that with the fourth car Okay, so um, cars dot add gene swap between sorted cars i dot get component AI controller and the same one again. So I'll just copy this and I'll put it down the next line so you can actually see it. Let's just tab across a bit and then this one will be i plus one okay so they're the two parents for that particular car now each parent or set of parents is going to have two offspring where the values are switched around the other way so this is going to be i plus one and this will be just i okay now because of the way that I'm actually doing the gene swapping and averaging both of these offspring are going to have exactly the same values in them uh, that's created due to the averaging up here I'm going to leave it like this in case you decide to change your gene swapping strategy so if you just have parent one in the first half and parent two in the second half then the second uh, car coming through or the second child will have those values the other way around so you do get a definite change in the uh, chromosome sequence of each car okay so now once we've done that that's going to be enough cars it'll create another 50 cars and then we're going to delete the existing cars so for int i equals zero i is less than sorted cars in position i and then in here we'll just put a destroy sorted cars and that's going to basically kill off all of the parents so that the children can take over right so that's destroy and after that we will update what our generation value is so plus plus to the next generation 
and we'll update our text mesh.text to equal trial colon space then plus generation so that you can see that along the top. Okay, my for loop isn't finished, so I plus plus there to make sure that we increment it as we go around. Oh, and this should be sorted cars dot count, not I in that particular case. So that's going to loop around and get rid of all those cars. Okay, so now that we've got the breeding and the gene swapping, we just have to run these. So we're going to do it inside of the update where we'll keep track of the time and then at the particular time or the end of our trial, we will do the breeding and swap everybody over. So time, if time dot real time since startup is greater than start time plus generation time, then we're going to run breed and create a new set of cars. Now, every time you get that new set of cars created, they're going to spawn at the starting location, which means you'll get that explosion of cars again. All right, so time to save this and have a look at it running. Okay, so position your scene and your camera however you want to be able to see what these cars are doing. Essentially, the corners are the challenges for these cars. So let's just press play and see what we get. So we'll get that initial explosion. And you know that the 20 seconds is up when they respawn and explode again. So this is the first time some cars are getting around. There's a bit of a pile up just here. These are the types of things we're looking at getting rid of. Now there's a car just sitting here going back and forth into the bumper because it can't get around the track and get more waypoints to get fitter. It's just going to be bred out. Okay, we're still kind of, some cars are slamming into that barrier in the beginning. And here we go. Up in this other back corner, a bit of a pile up going on there. And that pileup can be due to like cars that have been stuck and they just haven't got going again or slower cars where the faster cars have actually come all the way around and you'll see them there's some here they're going to slam into the pack of cars now they might get through and they're still going to be considered fit because they've actually made more waypoints than the pile of cars that kind of got stuck so as you're going along as well this pile of cars that get stuck should eventually start to dissipate. So you can see more and more cars successfully getting around the track. And I think if we keep going at about tr trial number eight, you start to see some pretty good behavior from the cars where they're driving around without very much difficulty at all. Okay, so that is basically our genetic algorithm tutorial for training these cars. And you can do it with anything uh, in your games that have all these different settings that uh, determine what their behavior is going to be and you're trying to find the optimal thing. If you wanted to take this a little bit further, what you could actually do is build a different track like this with waypoints on it. In fact, you don't even need a track. You just need like a system of waypoints that go around. You can extend this particular project. If we go under the circuit, remember I've got all these waypoints here. Well, you just add more and more waypoints to there and make sure that you put them into this waypoint array here. Now, if you want to train them on this track and then to go and uh, use those cars on a different track to see how effective your training has been, once you've run several trials, like say 10 trials or something with these cars, then what you can do is find the fittest car that you've got. Now that might be in the um, breeding program when you've sorted them all. Or you can also just pause here, find one of these cars, like say this one here, and it's that one, and then look at the values that just got set in the AI controller save these values write them down whatever but take them with you to your next scenario and those values there will then be a pretty good driving car okay so i hope that you enjoyed this tutorial on genetic algorithms i love using genetic algorithms because they're so essentially they're so simple um yet they can create really complex 
behaviours and they're a machine learning technique just like neural nets but neural nets is way more complicated and this is just more fun to play around with. So I'll see you next time in my next YouTube tutorial. Oh, and don't forget, if you'd like a copy of this final project that I've got here, well, it's available for free for my Patreon subscribers. If you'd like to support our work, like us on YouTube, visit our website, holistic3d.com, look for our courses on holistic3dlearn.com or support us on Patreon.